This is Katero, a two-year-old baby brother of Ryu. They lost their parents in a tragic plane crash. Today, they are going to meet chairwoman of a school, who also lost her kids on same plane crash, and now she wants to adopt them. Upon entering, chairwoman asks, why are you so late? I've been waiting for you since morning. In response, Katero calls her Shaggy. Ryu closes his mouth and apologizes to her. Chairwoman then says, in exchange for living with me, you have to work as part-time babysitter in my school. Afterwards, Seikawa escorts them to the daycare, where they see kids are playing with each other. Seikawa tells, this is a babysitter club that was opened by Chairwoman's son, but nobody wanted to join it, and the club was never formed. Ryu says, as the first member of club, I'll do everything I can for babysitter club. Seikawa wipes his eyes, stating that his nobility has moved him to tears. He then wishes good luck to Ryu and leaves. Ryu opened the daycare room. All the kids stop playing and stare at them. They then run towards Seikawa and hide behind him. One of the kids yanks on their caretaker's ear and he wakes up. Ryu introduces himself as the new babysitter. Man replies, he has heard of the two. As he approaches Ryu, introducing himself as Yuzeta Yoshihito, a graduate of this school and only caretaker her. Kids ask Yuzeta, can we play with them? Yuzeta says, first, introduce yourself. And they all shout their names at once. Yuzeta tells them to form a naming train to introduce themselves. First is Kirin. The second one is Taka. The third is Takuma, whose twin brother is Kazuma. The youngest is Midori. Ryu then introduces Katero and places him down. But Taka calls him a monster, telling everyone to attack Monster Katero. Ryu shocks and stops them saying, I can be monster for you. They all attack him, jabbing him with sword and pulling his cheeks. Katero sees they are bullying his brother and attempts to save him but gets knocked back every time. He doesn't know what to do, Ryu tells him to play elsewhere saying, I'll be fine. Katero goes to the bookshelf and takes out a book. He then looks at Ryu surrounded by other kids. Yuzeta asks, do you want your big brother back? Katero nods. He then asks, should I read this book for you? He shakes his head and looks towards Ryu. Yuzeta understands he's feeling lonely and pats him, saying, in this room, he won't notice you unless you call him. Yuzeta then calls Ryu and tells him, my shift is over. He then hands Midori to Ryu, asking him, will you handle the kids by yourself? And Ryu says, yes, I'll do that. As he leaves, he thinks, I would have stayed if you'd asked me. Now Ryu changes Midori's diaper and Taka attacks him. Kirin approaches and asks, are you hungry? I have made the food. She then drags Midori, saying, I'll be mama and you be baby, Midori. Ryu stops her, saying, it could be dangerous. Suddenly she gets shocked as twins run through her food. Kazuma falls off and is about to cry, but Ryu picks him up. Takuma pats him, saying, pain, pain, fly away, and Kazuma feels better. Kirin is sad to see her ruined food, so Ryu cheers her up. Midori starts to cry, and Ryu quickly picks her up. Taka again climbs on him and starts pulling his ears. He then looks at Katero, asking him if he's alright, and Katero nods. But Taka attacks him again, diverting him, and Katero seems to feel alone. Kids' mothers arrive, and they run into their arms. Kirin's mother asks who Ryu is, so he introduces himself. The mothers then introduce themselves as well. Midori's mother is Yukari, Takuma and Kazuma's mother is Yumi, and Kirin's mother is Yeoi. Ryu says, Nice to meet you all, there is my baby brother Katero. While Katero looks at his book, they all say hello to him. Now, they all wave to Ryu, saying, see you tomorrow. Just when Ryu comes inside the room, Taka's brother appears, saying, Taka, it's time to go. He looks at Ryu and asks, who are you? Ryu tells him, I'm the new helper here in a middle school third year. Taka's brother tells him, I'm Hayato and in the same grade as you are, so you are the transfer student joining our class. Ryu says yes and thinks he seems pretty scary but a decent guy. Taka tells his brother, I'm not going home. Hayato says, you are going. So Taka says, no, I'm gonna play with Ryu more. He gets hit by Hayato and starts crying. Ryu says, you didn't have to hit him. Taka hits Hayato's legs and calls him a meanie. Hayato suggests that Ryu look after his own brother as he looks lonely all by himself. Ryu says, right. Hayato then leaves with Taka. Ryu approaches and asks Katero, do you want me to read that book for you? But Katero falls onto Ryu's lap, breathing heavily. He rushes out, catching up with Hayato and begs him to show the nearest hospital. His brother has fever. Hayato agrees and quickly drops off Taka at their mother's office and runs with Ryu towards the hospital. On the way, Ryu thinks why he left his baby brother all alone. At the hospital, while Katero is lying on the bed, the doctor tells Ryu that the fever might be caused by stress from a change in the environment. After getting some rest, he'll be fine. Later, nurse tells he can take Katero home after he awakes. Ryu then steps outside and thinks of informing his parents, but tears fall on the phone when he realizes they're no more. He starts crying, thinking that his parents will never come back, and Katero is all he has now. Just then, chairwoman puts her hand on him and says, so you're finally crying. 
She recalls the day of the funeral when she saw that the only ones who were not crying were her, Ryu, and Katero. She tells him, those they have lost will not come back, but that does not mean that they are alone in this world. War tears come out of his eyes. Afterwards, Ryu enters the hospital. Nurse comes out with a crying Katero, telling him, Katero has been crying since he woke up. Katero reaches his arms out, and Ryu hugs him as he calls him an idiot for not calling him over sooner. He wonders if Katero has realized they won't see their parents again. That night, Chairwoman comes to tuck in their blanket. After she leaves, Ryu tears up realizing, Chairwoman is right, no one is truly alone. The next morning, the Chairwoman asks Sekawa where did these shabby flowers come from. Sekawa explains, Ryu and Katero picked these flowers for you. He then prepares to dispose of them, but she takes them back and blushes, saying, I changed my mind. Meanwhile, teacher asks Ryu to introduce himself. He stutters, but when he looks at Hayato, he feels more confident and introduces himself. At the daycare, Taka asks Katero if he would like to read his favorite book with him. Katero nods, and other kids smile in excitement. Later, Ryu reads the Book of Power Rangers. Taka says, I'm the Red Ranger, but Takuma wants to be Red Ranger, and his brother too. Kirin says, I'm the Pink Ranger, and Yuzeta falls asleep holding Midori. The next morning, Ryu wakes up to see Katero lying on his chest. He groggily sits up and hugs him, remembering they aren't with their parents anymore. Suddenly, Ryu startles as old hag slams open the door, ordering them to get out of bed and prepare for school. Seikawa says he has already prepared their breakfast and lunch. As old hag was lecturing them, Kataro grabs her hair and calls her Shaggy. She warns him, if you call me Shaggy again, I'll give you the same haircut. Seikawa imagines him and calls it cute. She then presents Ryu with a school uniform, as he is going to be her academy's student. Realizing that she would go to the trouble of buying a new uniform, he shows gratitude as she leaves. At the daycare, as Katero takes off his shoes, Yuzeta is surprised that Cheap Steak Hag would buy a uniform for Ryu. He then tells Katero, I am going to class, I'll be back at lunchtime, and leaves him at daycare. As he walks towards the class, he feels a bit embarrassed because other students are staring him. Just then Hayato appears and tells him it's because you have bought kids along with you. Ryu turns around and asks what are you doing here. Taka explains Katero wanted to follow you, so they came along. Katero hugs Ryu while other children ask him to play, embarrassing him. So, Hayato raises his fist to shut them, and Taka runs away in tears calling his brother Poopyhead and bumped into Fierce Girl. She asks why kids are here and scolds them for turning school into a playground. The children begin to cry in fear and hug onto Ryu. He apologizes and take children back to daycare. This girl is an Amata, topper student of the school, but her behavior has made others comment that. She is so mean to Ryu, but she ignores them and walks away. Meanwhile, they return to the daycare and find Yuzeta sleeping as usual. Hayato hits him, waking him up from his dreamy slumber. Ryu notices Katero, who seems sad from what happened. He pats his head to cheer him up. Inamata appears and gives Taka's lunch he had forgotten, sent by his mom who is teacher at their school. But seeing her there, children trembles in fear. Just when Inamata prepares to leave, Yuzeta cries out in pain that his stomach is hurting. He asks Hayato to take him to the nurse's office and instructs Ryu and Inamata to watch over the kids during his absence. They are dumbfounded as they watch them walk away. Ryu assures Inamata, I can manage on my own, you can return to class. She insists on staying to fulfill the responsibility given to her by Yuzeta. However, kids huddle behind Ryu like scared squirrels avoiding her presence. Afterwards Inamata offers to hold sleeping Midori. She turns red and loudly says, I just want to help out. Her voice wakes up Midori, she begins to cry and Ryu tries to console her. Taka pokes Inamata with his sword. All the kids get ready to attack her, calling her villain. Inamata angrily asks who they are calling villain, startling them. Just then Ryu notices Inamata begins to tear up and tells kids to apologize for their bad behavior. But she doesn't want their forced apologies and feels sorry for Ryu as he is burdened with taking care of disobedient kids. Ryu smiles and says they are not a burden. But he gets hit by the pillow by an Amata, who says don't give me that smile. She throws stuffed toys at him and cries that kids like him and no one likes her. Studying is the only thing she is good at. Kirin puts her hands on her lap as an Amata wipes her tears. She says don't cry and all the children looks at her with teary eyes. She hugs them and they all says sorry to her. Soon, we find her peacefully slumbering along with kids. Later on, Katero stares at the tiger on his sweater and Ryu asks why he is looking at it. Kirin responds, he is sad because Taka insulted him, saying it's dumb to wear a tiger t-shirt when he's never seen a real tiger. Taka says I just told the truth. Hayato hits his head and scolds him for insulting Katero. Taka cries and says you always do this to me brother, you just hate me. Hayato bluntly says he doesn't particularly like or hate him, making Taka cry even more, causing him to run over to Yuzeta. He screams I hate you brother. Hayato picks up Taka and take his brother to home. Afterwards, Ryu suggests to Katero, let's go to the zoo together this weekend. 
Other kids also express their desire to go to the zoo. Yuzeda appears and suggests that he take all of them, deciding to tag along, as he can be paid for working weekends. During dinner, as Kataro eats, Ryu asks the chairwoman for permission to go on a zoo trip. She agrees but refuses to pay Yuzeda since the mothers are also joining the trip. Ryu invites her to join, but she refuses, saying it's a stinky place. On the day of the trip, Seikawa gives a large lunchbox and some money to Ryu from the chairwoman for the trip. At the zoo, he offers to pay Yuzeda using the money that he received. Yuzeda refuses, but plans to take photos of the children and sell them to fathers who couldn't come. Hayato appears in his basketball clothes and drops Taka off because he has to go for practice. Now they all started visiting animals. First kids get amazed to see the elephant. Yuzeda takes several pictures of the children as they watch different animals excitedly. Children get terrified when Tiger roars through glass. They all run to the Yuzeda and their mothers, and trembles in fear. Katero is still in front of the tiger, unfazed. Ryu sees utter fear in his face. He picks up Katero, realizing if they were in wild Katero would be eaten first. Afterwards they see the cute tiger cubs. Yuzeda decides it is time for lunch, and Ryu goes to the lockers to pick up his lunch. He looks at Katero stares at something, and turns to see. A family enjoying the zoo together and he pictures his own parents. Just then Yuzeda calls him, and tells him to hurry up. The mothers compliment Seikawa's amazing lunch boxes that are full of cute animal-shaped foods. After lunch, Yuzeda takes a photo of the children with rabbits, confident that fathers will buy this cute picture. Katero points to a sheep and calls it Shaggy, like the chairwoman. Ryu and Katero get next to old lady as Yuzeda clicks their picture. Afterwards, Taka shows Katero a hawk and brags, his name also means hawk. Ryu tells Taka, the falcon called Hayabusa also contains Hayato's name. Taka denies that Hayato is his brother before taking Katero and walking away. Afterwards, they visits the toy shop. Kids pick up toys and beg their mothers to buy them. Katero wants a keychain that looks like shaggy old woman. Ryu take him to pay for it, leaving Taka in Yuzeda's care. Yuzeda offers Taka to buy souvenir for his brother. But Taka blushes and says I don't want one. Just then he saw someone like his brother and runs after him, when Yuzeda was choosing souvenirs. The others walk up to Yuzeda, but Taka is missing. As it is getting dark, Taka runs after his brother, but the man turns to look at his watch, and he realizes he is not his brother. He thinks of going back and begins to run but he trips and falls. After realizing that he is lost, he cries for his older brother. Just then, Hayato comes and picks him up. He calls him an idiot and tells him a man should not cry just because he is lost. Ryu also reaches there and is relieved to see that Taka is okay. Hayato hits Taka and tells him to apologize. Later, everyone says goodbye after the day ends. Ryu is glad to see that Hayato arrived and tells Taka was really lonely without him. Hayato tells he came because his mother had hit him for leaving Taka alone. Katero and Taka are asleep. Taka mumbles in sleep I love you brother. Hayato says idiot, I don't hate you either. Ryu teases Hayato, even if you seem cold, I know you love your brother so much. The next day, while Katero is reading a book, all the other kids are playing. Yuzeda looks at the calendar and realizes it's Valentine's Day. He calls the kids closer and holds out his hands, but the kids appear blank. Katero puts his hand on Yuzeda's. He says, not this, I want Valentine's gift sent by your mommies. The children all exclaim that they have nothing, as Yuzed sighs. Meanwhile, Valentine's gossip is taking place among girls in class. They ask Yuki, a shy girl, if she likes someone but she becomes flustered and nervously laughs. A boy asks Q if anyone gave him Valentine's chocolate. When Ryu denies it, Yuki smiles in relief because she has a crush on him. Just then a girl offers chocolate to Hayato, but he declines saying, I don't like it. Boys cried out you freak, if you don't want, give us. Main attraction is Yagi, a brilliant student, showered with chocolates by girls. This enraged in Amada, as gift giving is banned on school premises. Girls argue, what's your problem, you're just being a stick in the mud. Yagi intervenes and says he'll accept these generous offerings after class. He then asks in Amada, you were helping babysitters yesterday, right? I'm actually interested in joining the babysitter club. Do you know anything about it? Inamata recalls that the daycare center is welcoming new members. She furiously cries out to ask the club himself and walks out. Yaga's friend Nezu is quietly watching everything. Inamata reflects on the girl's comments, admitting she is a stick in the mud. She tearfully says, wherever I go, I spoil the fun. She fears returning to daycare, thinking the kids will hate her too. Now, Yagi goes to the daycare room and asks to join babysitter club. Ryu is so excited to have someone express interest in babysitting. He then introduces himself and each of the children in daycare. Yagi introduces himself and compliments Kirin's cute pigtails and she shows off them happily. He then says, Taki you're cool, just like your brother, and he eagerly replies, yes I am cool. He compliments Midori's eyes, which flatters her. To Takuma and Kazuma he tells, you both looks like best friends. Ryu is amazed by how quickly Yagi bonded with the children. 
While at the library, Inamata overhears two boys saying that Yagi is always glaring at kids, and she runs to the daycare to save them. Meanwhile, Yagi smiles at Katero. His smile concerns Ryu. Yagi says, Katero looks round and plump, and right before he touches him, Inamata rushes in and slams the door open, telling Yagi to stop. She's shocked to see blood on the floor but realizes Yagi has a nosebleed from poking Katero's cheeks. But the reason is also sinister as Yagi's friend Nezu appears at daycare room and pretty much accuses him of being a pervert. Horrified, Ryu grabs the kids away from Yagi, who disagrees with accusations saying I got nosebleed from eating too much chocolate. But Nezu points out, I didn't saw you eating any. He drags him away and Yagi agrees not to join the club. But he asks if he can visit occasionally to poke the kid's cheeks. Yuzeta pokes Midori's cheek, saying poking is fun. The kids only learned about chocolate and now want to eat it too. Yagi begins to offer them some chocolate, but Nezu holds him back. The children ask Inamata for chocolates, but she says it's against the school rules, making them cry. However, she cheers them up by promising chocolate tomorrow, and they start jumping with joy. Ryu and Inamata walk home together as the day ends. He tells her to wait as he runs into a store. After a few minutes, he returns and Katero hands her a small box of chocolate. Ryu says it's alright to give chocolates off campus. Inamata replies she's just a stick in the mud and Ryu says he likes that about her. He then says goodbye and walks away and Inamata turns red. Yuki secretly stalking them, wondering if they're in relationship. Meanwhile Yagi is buying chocolates for kids and tells Nezu, I can imagine Katero's cheek stuffed with chocolate as he nosebleeds. At night, Seikawa offers chocolates that he made himself to Ryu and Katero. Katero tries to reach to take one, so Seikawa helps him. After taking the chocolate, Katero asks his brother to open his mouth, and Ryu eats it and thanks Katero, who then smiles. Meanwhile, Inamata is trying to choose best chocolates for daycare kids. Next morning, during PE class, the boys shiver in the cold. Ryu asks Hayato how he stays still. Hayato admits he's cold, and a boy comments, are you a cryborg? Just then Yuzeta appears with children in cart, they eagerly ask him to let them out of cart. The children immediately run towards Ryu, and he's soothed by their warmth. Ryu asks Yuzeta about the cart, and he says he uses it to prevent the children from wandering off during walk. They are just like animals. The kids say, you idiot, Yuzeta, we are not animals. In response, Yuzeta scares them by saying, what if you brats get kidnapped by a weird man, locked up in a dark room? No one will hear your screams, and then you'll get gobbled up whole. Ryu tells Yuzeta not to scare them, they are really frightened but he warns the children of going off with strangers. The other boys notices, Ryu is looking a lot warmer surrounded by kids, so they creepily reach out their arms towards the children. They chase them, calling them heat packs, and even fight over them. Nearby, a mysterious man is watching the kids. Ryu stops two students from getting Kirin, who hides behind Yuzeta. Taka runs to his brother and asks for help. A boy catches Kazuma, who bawls out of fear. Ryu sees Takuma crawling into the bushes and calls him to come back. The stranger is standing before him as he enters. He grabs him. Ryu hands Katero to a boy and rushes to save Takuma, shouting at stranger to let him go. Hayato takes off his shoe and hurls it at the stranger. It's a direct hit. That is a baller move. Takuma smiles excitedly as stranger goes down, holding him. Yuzeta compliments Hayato's accurate pitch while Ryu asks if Takuma knows this person. Takuma joyfully tells that he is his and Kazuma's father. At daycare center, man says sorry about all the fuss. Ryu asks why he was lurking in the bushes looking so suspicious. Yuzeta explains, he is an actor who was recently in a toothbrush commercial, he is famous. Kusuk explains that he did not want to cause a scene if someone recognized him. But Ryu and Hayato don't recognize him as actor. He cowers, realizing he overestimated his fame. He says I'm so embarrassed, and as he cries he tells, this is the first day off he's had in six months so he wanted to spend it with his kids because he's worried they don't recognize him anymore. Ryu suggests, you should spend time with them here in daycare, they'll like it. Kusu gratefully agrees to stay, and Ryu calls Takuma and Kazuma over. He then picks up Kazuma and hands him to his father, but Kazuma begins to cry. Kusuk opens the door, saying, I am leaving. Ryu stops him, saying, Kazuma doesn't like to be held by unfamiliar people, this added salt to his wounds. He then says if you'll leave today, gap will increase between you and your sons. Kusuk is touched and tears come out of his eyes. Ryu says I'll help you to make up with kids. Just then Takuma comments, Ko Kun, you are a crybaby. Now, Kusuk plays with Takuma, but Kazuma cries out give him back. Next, he tries upsy daisy with Midori, and Kazuma cries again. Even after Ryu reassures him, Kazuma continues to cry with fear. Kusuka plays, cart pulling with other kids, but Kazuma says, scary. Yuzeta whispers, I didn't know Kazuma disliked his father so much. While Kusuka sits defeated in a corner, he then goes to his sons and apologizes for interrupting their fun. He says, have lots of fun, I'll wait for you at home. He decides to leave and waves goodbye to his sons. Kusuk slowly walks out but bumps into a student. 
the girl immediately recognizes him, and her screech attracts other girls who swarm around the actor and they ask him for autographs and pictures. Just then, Kusu hears Papa and he sees Takuma and Kazuma held aloft by Ryu and Hiato. They want him to come back. Awa, actor dad is so happy about this he cries. He tries to move through the crowd as he asks if they just addressed him as their father. A teacher appears blowing a whistle and shows a picture of the chairwoman. She warns, if they don't go back to class, they'll be held back a year. The girls quickly run out of the area. Teacher is his wife and apologizes as she explains, Yuzeta told her what had happened. She says, she's been showing the twins his movies to make up for his absence. In the last one, he played a kidnapper, which is why Kazuma is terrified of him. She adds that he was very cool in the villain role. Just then Takuma and Kazuma ask if he will play with them. Kusu hugs them as he tears up. Both the kids look so happy with their father, while Katero silently looks at their happy family. The next morning starts with the beautiful cherry blossoms blooming. It's Ryu's first day of high school after he graduated. He heads to the bulletin board to post his babysitter recruitment poster, only to find it already covered with flyers from other clubs. He then goes to the daycare room, where he is immediately bombarded by the kids, who bring him down. He drops the poster, which lands on Katero's head. Katero stands still, making no attempt to remove it. Even Yuzeta simply reads flyer off Katero's head. So, Ryu asks him to at least take it off before reading it. Yuzeta then suggests they go around and see the other clubs. The twins happily agree. Taka wants to visit his brother's club, and Kirin is excited too. In the hallway, the kids join hands and make a parade. They sing a song and dance, pretending to fart. It's hilarious, and Kataro keeps failing to catch the rhythm. Ryu is rather embarrassed as everyone's attention is on them. Kirin eagerly opens the drama club. But she gets scared, and so do the others, except Takuma, when they see her mom in a zombie look. Her mom who runs this club, says, Do you not recognize your own mom? This is the power of makeup. Ryu stops her saying, Ma'am they are all scared of you, while the children tremble hiding behind. She starts talking with Ryu, just then Katero tugs his pant, pointing to kids fleeing down the hallway. He apologizes to her, saying, Sorry, I have to go, and calls out Yuzeta whose face is painted with scary makeup. Running down the hallway twins meet their mom, they run into her arm and hugs her. She asks what they're doing, and Ryu explains they're exploring other clubs. Just then, Kirin smells a sweet scent, and kids run in that direction. Twins' mother also leave and Ryu follows the kids along with Katero, but he stops as he finds an ant. He points towards it and Yuzeta and Midori also joins to watch it. Meanwhile, kids found the cooking room, but cookies aren't ready yet. And Amata, who is in cooking club tells, these kids are from babysitting club. Ryu enters, asking if anyone has seen any kids run around. And kids get happy after reuniting with Ryu. And Amata scolds him, not watching kids carefully and letting them run around. But soon she realizes that she has scared everyone and blushes as she apologizes for raising her voice. One of girl replies, you showed that you really care about kids. Ryu apologizes for causing problem and says, kids, let's go. Taka refuses to go as he wants sweets first. So, Ryu has to take him away forcefully along with others. To calm down a crying Taka, he says, let's visit the sports club, your brother plays baseball there. They go outside to see the sports club, and a student comments on how Ryu is basically stuck with babysitting. Taka eagerly watches the club during practice and glimmers with excitement when his brother looks at him. But Hayato quickly looks away, upsetting Taka, who yells at him for being so mean. Hayato comes over and hits Taka and he cries even louder. He tells Ryu that their team sucks. And a member yells, I heard you, as he returns. Ryu feel that his peers are having a kind of fun that's being denied to him. Katero finds more ants, but when he tries to get his brother's attention he notices his sad face. Even Yuzeta notices too. Kids call Ryu, asking, where are we going next? Ryu tells I have to find a place to put poster of babysitter club. He asks little brother to come along, but Katero shakes his head. He plays it cool but is hurt as he goes by himself. After Ryu leaves, Katero starts running away from his group. He puts the poster in a corner of the bulletin board. Then he sulks about his brother not wanting to come with. Just then Hayato appears with Katero and tells Ryu, I want to join Babysitter's Club too, here's my application. Katero recruited him by tugging on his pants. Hayato says, Katero noticed you were depressed and need friends. Ryu is amazed by how well his little brother understands him. The other kids come running. They got their cookies and offer them up to Ryu to cheer him up. He is moved. With club day over, the boys settle in, and Yuzeta makes them matching aprons. And Amata occasionally brings cookies for the kids. Hayato comments, they could break a tooth as the kids try to eat, and she angrily replies, then don't eat them. Next morning Ryu opens his eyes and feels heavy. Katero is fast asleep on his chest. He rubs his eyes as the chairwoman suddenly enters the room, scolding Ryu for staying in bed. As he gets out, he falls onto the floor. 
He struggles to get up but repeatedly slips. Seikawa congratulates Ryu on his changing voice, but the chairwoman smacks him and he apologizes, it was a joke. She then takes Katero away, telling, if he also caught a cold, it will double the trouble. Katero stands at the door and whimpers. She tells him to come help her make medicine for Ryu, and Ryu lies on bed to take rest. Meanwhile, Katero calls her Shaggy. Chairwoman, holding a warm blanket for Ryu, asks, are you referring to blanket or me? He says it again, and she dumps the blanket on him asking him to follow her. At kitchen, she aggressively cuts a lemon in half and Katero mumbles, demon lady. She instructs him to squeeze the lemon into a small cup so she can make Ryu some honey lemon, he'll feel better. Katero sits on the floor. He shakes the lemon over the cup, but sees that nothing drops out. Chairwoman asks should I help, but he refuses. Eventually, he manages to muster up enough strength to get a single drop into the cup. He smiles and shows it to her. She instructs him to squeeze more and Katero continues to juice it. She finds a lemon juicer in the drawer but lets Katero continue juicing the lemon himself. He finishes his squeezing, but when he stands up, he knocks over the juice. Chairwoman hands him the other half of the lemon, suggesting to try again. As she cleans up spilled juice she notes, Katero is quite determined. Later, she brings the rice gruel and asks Sekawa how Ryu is doing. He tells his fever is bit better and old woman says let him rest. As he closes the door, Ryu begins to dream about his family. His parents are going on another trip. This time they took away Katero with them. Ryu begs not to take Katero, fearing he won't come back. He tears up in his sleep. But Katero is alive, and he wipes his big brother's tears, waking him, and also stinging his eyes. Chairwoman appears and tells, his hands have lemon on them. She hands him a cup with a hot beverage, telling him that Katero made it. As he drinks it, he thanks God for not taking his baby brother away from him. Katero smiles as Ryu pats his head and thanks him. The chairwoman lifts Katero and tells him he must leave, confusing him. Poor boy thought his brother would be fine after the medicine, but she insists Ryu still needs rest. Ryu expresses concern that Katero might catch his cold, leaving him dismayed. Afterwards, he sits under a chair and pouts. Seikawa tries to lure him out with ice cream, but it doesn't work. He's really upset. The next morning, Midori's mom leaves her with Ryu, and she waves her goodbye as she departs. Ryu suggests Katero, let's read a storybook, until others arrive. Before that, he puts Midori down to change diaper but realizes he's run out of them. As he opens the cabinet to get more wipes, she crawls over to the door. Just as a student opens the door, he's clearly disgusted by the smell. As Midori pulls on his pant leg, he falls to the ground. Ryu watches in shock as boy cries out, do something. Afterward, they sit to talk. He complains about smell, saying, is this a poop club? Katero holds a Cinderella picture book as they are conversing. He calls Midori a poop factory and Katero a space cadet. Ryu defends Katero as the boy asks him if he is looking after a girl named Midori, because he doesn't realize poop factory is Midori. Ryu asks why he's interested in her, and he explains he wants to see his future daughter's face. Ryu is confused and asks, aren't you still a student? He says, yes, but I'm senior to you. Call me Inui Senpai. Ryu points out Midori's mom is already married, but Inui simply smiles and says it does not matter in love. Ryu panics, but Inui scoffs, saying you won't understand because you lack romantic experience. He then gets up to leave, believing that Midori is not there. Later, Yuzeda waves his hand in Ryu's face. The interaction with Inui made him blacked out. Kirin tells him he was sleeping with his eyes open. Poor Katero stands there, holding Cinderella, waiting for Ryu to read it. But Ryu says he'll read it later. He then asks Yuzeda about Midori's father. Yuzeda tells he is at a dig overseas, confirming Midori's mom isn't a widow or divorced. Ryu is horrified, thinking she might be cheating on her husband with Inui. Yuzeda teases Ryu, asking if he's into older women, but he firmly denies. In classroom, he tells Hayato about it. Hayato bluntly responds that it's their choice, so stay out of such mess. Class begins, but Ryu is lost in thoughts about Midori's mother and Inui's comment about his lack of romantic experience. He's never been in love. He remembers people saying Yuki is cute, so he stares at her. But he doesn't feel attracted to her. She blushes when she notices Ryu staring at her. In hallway, he keeps pondering, until Inamata appears. He asks her views on cheating. She says cheaters deserve severe punishment. He then asks if she's ever had a crush, making Inamata upset, as she sees herself as dull person who hasn't experienced love yet. Ryu returns to the daycare center to see the children sticking snot all over Inui, while Katero is still with his Cinderella book. Ryu calls the children over in with tissue to help them blow their noses. He holds Midori and says it's not nice to pick on weak. Inui approaches Ryu and says, I found out the poop factory is Midori. 
Why didn't you tell me earlier? And she bites his finger. Kids also call him weak. Ryu then argues it's not right to take someone with a husband and child. And Yui replies that her husband is no more as she told him he's far away means dead, so I want to support her. Midori's mom suddenly appears to pick up her. And Yui, who is totally red, walks up to her and hold her hands. Children starts calling him boiled octopus. He stutters and starts to say something, but Midori begins to cry loudly. She takes Midori and pats her and assures her daddy is coming home soon which stuns Inui. He asks about her faraway husband, and she explains, he is returning from a dig in Turkey. She then asks what Inui was going to say, and he blushes saying I forgot. He then offers to babysit Midori so she can go on dates with her husband, and she thanks him for his kindness. Inui sulks in the corner as the children attack him with toy swords. He angrily confronts Yuzeta for knowing about her husband's situation. Yuzeta says he found it too funny and decided to play along. Inui covers his face in embarrassment, saying, he looked like an idiot. Ryu denies this, saying he looked really cool in front of her. Inui jokes that he must have mixed up the order, first comes love and marriage, then kids. Ryu then looks over at Kitaro, who is still holding the Cinderella book. He apologizes to him and reads the picture book to the children. Then he imagines Midori and her mom happily reuniting to her father. Next day, things have taken a dark turn, as Ru Dragon King has taken over the earth in service of Demon Queen Midori. But never fear, the Rangers 5 are here. Taka is red. Kataro is blue ranger. The twins are both yellow. Kirin isn't paying attention and drawing. Taka takes this badly. Kirin doesn't want to play silly games anymore, she wants to study. Everyone is shocked to hear this. Ryu is horrified that she's turning into an Amada so soon. But it's okay, because she wants to study to be a witch. Taka, who is obviously ringleader, might have been willing to go along with this if Hayato hadn't said boys can't be witches. But with the other children automatically excluded, conflict ensues. Taka and Kirin argue passionately about whether heroes or witches are real. Ryu won't let Hayato tell them that neither are real so that they'll keep their innocent childlike dreams, but it's too late. It's going down. Katero tries to play peacemaker and is shoved for the effort. Ryu is horrified. Kid starts fighting. Talker returns the next day with evidence, a photo of himself with the Red Ranger. He says see real rangers exist. He then points to Kirin and accuses her of having no evidence that witches exist. Kirin holds her witch's book behind her and yells, I have evidence, I'm gonna show you by flying. Outside, with a determined face, she tries to fly on a broom. Yuzeta says, I think it's not gonna happen. Taka says, I told you witches don't exist. Let's go and play. Kirin says, I won't go until I fly. Ryu is worried for her. Yuzeta says, you should go back to class. Kirin will eventually give up. Ryu tells this problem to Hayato, and he says, just tell her the truth that witches don't exist. Ryu says, it's not right to shatter children's dreams. Just as they are conversing, Inamata appears and scolds for blocking restroom's way, and says, get out of way. Ryu apologizes saying, go ahead. She asks, I heard you talking about shattering children's dreams. Has something gone wrong? Hayato asks, do you want to join our conversation? She blushes and says no as she leaves. Ryu stops her and says, we need your opinion. Hev tells her about Kirin's problem, and she says, I can help. Meet me at lunchtime. Later, she brings some books having evidence of witches. Ryu says, it's scary. We can't show this terrifying history to children. As she realizes this, she apologizes and leaves, slamming the door. Yuki wonders what the relationship between Inamata and Ryu is really like. Ryu thinks Inamata is a bit strange but genuinely kind. His thoughts turn to the chairwoman, who reminds him of witches. He imagines asking her to pretend to be a witch, but she scolds him to study. Meanwhile, Yuzeta asks Kirin to come back inside, but she says don't get in my way I'm about to fly. Yuzeta thinks it's okay for her to stay if she doesn't jump off anything. Katero pulls his pant and holds up Kirin's book about witches to Yuzeta, who decides to read it to him. Twins also runs to listen it. Kirin looks up and sees a ledge from where she can jump off and fly. Ryu walks towards daycare, holding magic trick books to show kids in support of Kirin. He sees Kirin about to jump off the ledge and drops them. He manages to break her fall just in time. She sobs and sobs, her dream is broken. Ryu tries to comfort her and reflects that he should have just told her the truth that witches only exist in storybooks, as Hayato said. Just then Chairwoman appears, asking why she is crying. Kirin sniffs as she explains, she cannot fly. Chairwoman says of course you can't, you needs a hundred years of practice. Kirin's eyes widen as she asks if she is able to fly on a broom. She replies, I will leave that up to your imagination. Kids are also amazed to what she said as she leaves. Inside, Taka tells Kirin that they can play witches too. Kirin and kids smile as Ryu admits for a second he believed. Chairwoman was really a witch. In the next scene, we see Nezu with his siblings in their house. Suddenly, they hear his brother Kichai yelling at their father that he is leaving. 
and then he runs away. While Ryu hangs up laundry as Katero stares at a trail of ants, he then starts following them, but suddenly stops at a place. Katero comes back and pulls Ryu's pant. He continues to grasp his pants as he walks along. Ryu tells him I'll stumble if you keep pulling me by pants. As he stops, Ryu sees Kichai stuck in the bush. He unconsciously calls him Nezu, as he looks like him, while Katero calls him a mouse. Kichai struggles to free himself from bush, so Ryu holds out his hands to help. But little brat slaps him away saying I don't need your help. This act shakes Katero's very worldview. Ryu pats him and says I'm not hurt. Kichai is stuck in a bush. Ryu asks him if he is Nezu's brother and he nods. He tells Kichai your brother and I are in same school. He asks if something happened at home but Kichai remains silent. Ryu goes back to doing laundry telling him if he wants to talk. He can just call him over. He instructs Katero to wait with Kichai. Ryu decides to call Nezu but realizes he doesn't have his number. Katero is watching Kichai, but he suddenly start to panic and tell him to run away. As we see hands approaching him, they're Yagas, he reaches out to Katero and squishes his cheeks. Ryu and Inamata appear from the bushes as Yagi suffers nosebleed. Inamata angrily warns Yagi, if you won't stop touching Katero, I'll call the police. He teases her, if you wanna smoosh too, wait for your turn, further enraging her. Katero hides as Yagi cleans his nose. Ryu says I called Yagi because I only had his number, but surprised to see Inamata here. Yagi tells Nezu has work, so he came instead and Inamata bumped into him along the way so he invited her along. It turns out that Nezu's family is quite poor and has eight kids. Nezu's brother enthusiastically praises Nezu, from working hard to make money for family to excelling in school. And they all are amazed to know that. Yagi then starts tousling his hairs and says you're so cute, while he yells, leave me. Inamata loses patience and starts scolding Kichai, you are such a spoiled brat. Unlike your brother, who is so hardworking, you run from home and cause trouble for everyone. He starts to cry and says he wishes he were rich so he could get video games. Inamata asks if he left home just for a video game, but Ryu thinks there's likely a more important reason behind it. Suddenly, Tsukichi pops out, arguing kids have right to have things that are important to them. Tsukichi looks at Yagi and says this pervert is also here, did you do anything to my brother? Yagi says, I tousled Kichai's hair, he replies you jerk, don't touch him again. Tsukichi then explains games might not matter to adults. But to Kichai, they are, because he's the only one in his class without it, and his best friend kept pressuring him to get it, even though they knew his family is poor. Kichai continues to cry, saying, he loves his family, but he hates being poor. Yagi recalls a similar situation in elementary school, when he offered to let Nezu borrow the game, but Nezu refused and said he would make his own video game, if he wants it. He knows no one is gonna buy for him as he's poor. This was the first time Yagi thought that someone was cool. Kichai agrees that his brother is really cool while he recalls how hardworking his brother is. He then asks Ryu to pull him out and they both fall on ground. Ryu pats him asking are you okay and little Katero also pats him. Yagi pulls out Tsukichi and tries to play but get kicked. Both brothers then tells Inamata, we'll try to become good as Nezu. Just then, the yeah. bell rings. It's Nezu, here to apologize for his brother's behavior. Hands Ryu an Inamata box of sweets. Ryu accepts the gift and Inamata is confused why he's giving it to her. Kichai apologizes to his big brother for troubling him, who forgives them as they learn something. Nezu gives Kichai the game he wanted, and Tsukichi asks if you made it, making Nezu glare at Yagi. He then tells he didn't make it, but he offered to take over some shifts for a colleague, who sold the game to him cheap. He then says I don't know what this idiot Yagi told you and kicks his leg, whispering, half of what I said earlier was bluff. He then tells Kichai to share game with Tsukichi and pats him saying, go have fun with your friends. Ryu thanks Inamata for her help today, making her blush. Next day, Yuzeta plays with kids while talking with Ryu. Ryu tells, I have to complete my chemistry assignment during lunch break, so I won't able to come here for lunch today. Kids waves goodbye to him. He pats Katero and leaves for class. During break Yuzeta says let's have lunch but notices Ryu forgot to take his lunchbox. He thinks I'll eat his lunch if you won't come to take it, but Katero pulls his pants and holds out his hands. He asks if you want to take your brother's lunch to him. Katero nods and others also want to go with him. Yuzeta says, first, eat your lunch and kids eagerly start eating. As everyone is busy eating, Yuzeta hands lunch to Katero and tells him to deliver it. He puts a tag on him so if he gets lost, he can ask for help. Katero nods his head and slowly walks out of the daycare as Yuzeta waves to him. But he is worried about Katero going by himself. He spots Inui outside, and clenches fist with an idea and Midori imitates. Suddenly, a photo appears in front of him. He blushes, it's Midori's mom. He grabs photo and realizes it's a bait. Kids call him dumb. Meanwhile, as Katero walks down the hallway, several students stare and whisper, who is this little kid? Two girls run to teacher to report it, but a boy stops them, saying, look, he's on his first errand. 
Just then, Katero stops as he notices so many stairs. Students offer to assist him, but he declines, saying, I'll go myself. Students admire his determination and wish him good luck before leaving. Inui, who is watching Katero, is upset that students didn't help, and wonders how he ended up looking after a kid on an errand, because Yuzeda promised him to give picture in return. He then watches Katero take his first steps with his tiny legs. Meanwhile, Ryu realizes that he forgot his lunch and tells Hayato. When Hayato asks what's wrong, Yuki offers her lunch to Ryu, explaining that she's on a diet. He says dieting isn't good for health. Well, he can't sense love, but his classmates can. So, the boys step in and offer him some of their lunches, squashing the budding romantic moment. Hayato sarcastically says, it's nice to have caring classmates. At daycare, all the kids sleeps peacefully. Yuzeda wants to tell Ryu that Katero is coming but thinks Ryu's phone's off because he's studious. He then lies down to sleep. Meanwhile, Inui is watching Katero, who slowly finishes climbing half of stairs. As he turns a corner, a kid kicks him in the face, making the lunchbox go flying. Just when all seem lost and it's about to spill, Inui, wearing a paper bag, catches it. He puts it back and hands it to Katero. He is about to leave when Katero stops him saying, Thank you, Mask Man. And he blushes. Katero then continues his errand. Inui decides to stay and walks with him up the stairs. He guides other students aside as Katero is coming up the stairs. Ryu finishes his assignment. Finally, Katero arrives, lunchbox clutched tightly to his chest. Ryu is surprised to see him and walks towards him asking if he bought this lunch to him all by himself. And Katero nods. A boy says Ryu can't eat more after all the food they gave him. Hayato shoves bread into his mouth before Katero hears. Ryu lies, thank you Katero, I was really feeling hungry. He holds him and says let's eat together. Boys are so moved by this sacrifice. Yuki's friend says, your real rival is little brother and Yuki blushes. Ryu opens the lunchbox and sees contents are messed up. He feeds Katero some rice and they eat lunch together. And Katero for successfully completing his first errand. Inui is also touched as he's happy to see brother's love. Sekawa hands handkerchief, Inui freaks out as he appeared out of nowhere. Next day, girls ask Yuki, what do you like about Ryu? She turns red and says don't be loud, he might hear. Other boys in class listen with jealousy. Girls tell her don't worry he's not here. Yuki finally admits her feelings for Ryu. One girl says he has such a likable personality, both kind and good looking. Yuki is surprised to hear that. Another girl remembers him picking up her eraser when she dropped it. Then, a girl says Hayato is also attractive, another agrees and excitedly says he's hot. Third girl adds, but he's a little scary. Another girl argues, that's why he's hot. He also helps Q babysit, so he's secretly nice. Yuki despairs when she realizes how popular Ryu is. But the girls assure her they don't intend to be her rivals. Yuki blushes and says, you don't have to hold back because of me. Girls then say, your main competition is his baby brother. Even if you dated, you'd never be his first priority. Then a girl says, he's friendly with Inamata, does he likes her. Meanwhile, Inamata is passing from there. Another comments, no, Inamata seems unromantic and always indulged in studies. Just then they saw Inamata, who glares at them. Ryu also appears and she got so flustered that she angrily scolds the girls to close the door if they want to gossip. She then walks away and the boys call her scary while Ryu looks shocked. He then notices, he still has not taken off his apron. Hayato calls him absent-minded, and points out, your butt is covered with stickers. Hayato is surprised, Ryu did not notice when kids stick them onto him. Ryu turns red and asks why he did not tell him earlier. Girl says he's cute and boys are baffled by girls' ranking system. Meanwhile, kids are putting stickers on sleeping Yuzeda. Back to Inamata, she regrets for yelling at girls and accepts she's unromantic as they said. But it happened because she got flustered, it happens every time when Ryu is around. That's why she cannot visit children, she recalls Ryu complimenting her. On Valentine's Day, and her face turns completely red. Suddenly, she hears, your face is red. She turns around and instinctively denies. Kirin starts crying after getting yelled at, and as Inamata comes to the senses, she asks, what are you doing here and thinks, why kids have been sent to get lost in the hallways. Kirin says, we're not lost, I left a note with Yuzeda. While Yuzeda struggles to understand Kirin's note, and Taka is frantically looking for Katero. Kirin explains that we came to play with you. Inamata says, I'm flattered, but this isn't the right place to play, go back. Kirin gets teary and asks, do you hate us because you never come to play with us? Inamata turns red as she denies this, saying I can't come because he's there, but then stops herself. Kirin asks if she is talking about Yuzeda or Hayato. Kirin fears as she wonders if Inamata hates Ryu, which shocks Katero. She denies this, so Kirin asks if she likes Ryu, which she also denies. She concludes Inamata hates Ryu and cheer up sad Katero saying, I have planned to show her Ryu's good side. 
She holds his hand and runs, asking Inamata to follow them. Inamata squats awkwardly beside kids near Ryu's classroom. Kirin tells Katero to show off Ryu's best points. Katero nods, he opens classroom door, graving everyone's attention. He then approaches Q and hold out his arms. Ryu picks him up and girls are touched by this. He asks him why he's here. Meanwhile, Kirin shows Inamata that Ryu is very caring. Inamata agrees that he's kind but comments he's overindulgent. Kirin says, I get it you like strict men, just leave it to me. She runs in and tells Ryu, hit me or I'll be bad girl. But Hayato immediately hits her. She cries in Ryu's arms, shocked that Hayato hit her. Ryu comforts her and tells Hayato to listen to her before hitting. Hayato argues, I did, that's why I hit. She tells Ryu, you gotta be one to do that, so Inamata will make up with him. Inamata enters, saying, enough it's all misunderstanding. I don't hate Ryu. Kirin asks so, do you like him? She blushes and yells she doesn't, before angrily leaving. Ryu calls after Inamata. He hands Kirin over to Hayato as he runs after her. Yuki watches with shock. He grabs onto Inamata's wrist, surprising everyone. He smiles and tells her, there is a sticker on your skirt. It's a bore sticker and Ryu says kids put them on me too, I felt very embarrassed. Kirin proudly tells, I put that sticker on her. And his classmates wonder if Ryu is a total airhead. Inamata walks away, recalling Kirin's question about liking Ryu. She tells herself, if it was one or the other, she definitely hates him, but she's totally red. Kirin tells Ryu I know you're a good person, so you don't have to be sad. Then Yuzeta asks what's about me, she replies you're bad person. The next morning, while Katero helps his brother in cleaning, Kusuk arrives at the daycare with Takuma. Takuma takes Kusuk's glasses and Ryu asks about Kazuma. Takuma explains that Kazuma has a cold. Back at home, Kazuma is in bed, calling for Takuma. His mother comforts him, saying you need to rest, but first, take some medicine, it's sweet and help you get better. Kazuma reluctantly takes it, and his mother applauds him. Ryu says to Kusuk, Takuma and Kazuma might feel lonely today. But Takuma cheerfully points out at Katero trying the sunglasses. Kusuk starts crying and says Takuma is putting on a smile to hide his loneliness. Ryu wonders is it his imagination? Takuma looks okay, not lonely. Yuzeta appears and bet 100 yen that Takuma is doing fine. He asks Takuma if he is feeling lonely without Kazuma. He smiles a bit and says I'm okay, while Kazuma is a bit scared at home. Takuma then tells everyone that he promised his mom that he'll have fun so Kazuma will get well soon. Kusuk is touched that how brave his child is. Yuzeta says, I win the bet give me 100 yens. He gives him 500 yen per paid card instead. Greedy Yuzeta asks for his autograph too, thinking he'll sell it for mint. Kusuk is flattered to give autograph and Kazuma asks for one too, while Takuma happily draws on Katero's face. Kusuk tells them Takuma may start to feel lonely without Kazuma later. He kneels down to Takuma to say goodbye, but just then Hayato enters with Taka. Takuma gets distracted and runs to Hayato grabbing Katero. Kusuk tears up that Takuma likes Hayato more. Ryu calls him over to say goodbye to his father, and kids wave him while Yuzeta calls him shady. Afterwards, seeing Takuma holding Katero's hand, angers Taka who pulls Katero to the other side. They both starts pulling Katero. Ryu says stop, it's not tug of war, and Hiato hits Taka who cries out loudly, I'm Katero's best friend. Kirin asks where is Kazuma and Ryu explains that he's home with a cold. After knowing this Taka approaches Takuma and hold his hand saying, I'm gonna beat that cold. Takuma happily says I'll do that too and others also join them. They run over to Yuzeta and attack him. Yuzeta asks Ryu for help, but he says sorry I have to leave for class. Yuzeta drops to the floor, saying sure you can beat me and kids call him weak. While walking to class, Ryu is concerned about whether Takuma will be okay despite he looks cheerful now. Hayato thinks Kazuma might be struggling as he is cold and his brother is not with him. Ryu agrees, imagining Kazuma is probably crying and he is, while calling for Takuma. He thinks of twins' different personalities, Kazuma is always teary, while Takuma is always cheerful. Ryu mumbles never want to be apart as he thinks about twins during class and Yuki wonder who he doesn't want to be apart from. While all other kids are taking nap, Takuma wakes up. He searches beside him and pull off Taka's sock. As Takuma holds Taka's sock, he remembers Kazuma. His eyes widen as he looks around for Kazuma. Taka's foot accidentally hits Katero, waking him up. He gets up and sees Takuma leaving daycare. Ryu rushes to the daycare center, concerned about Takuma. He trips and falls when he suddenly sees Katero, who runs towards him and hugs him. He then points to the direction where Takuma went. At the school gate, two girls notice Takuma and the cat and call them. Ryu approaches and asks, what are you doing here? Takuma asks him if Kazuma is better. Ryu replies, I don't know, but I'm sure he might be better than before. Takuma looks down with sadness. Katero looks towards the gates as Yumi arrives with Kazuma, telling that his fever is down, so they've come to pick up Takuma. Kazuma cries as he reaches out to Takuma, who falls back and starts crying. 
Kazuma cries even more as their mom comforts Takuma, commending him for being brave and mentioning that Kazuma is better because he kept his promise. Yuzeta comes out with kids after they heard crying. He notes, this scene is the opposite of the usual, Takuma is crying and Kazuma is laughing. They wave to the twins, who are holding hands. Ryu believes twins are better off with each other. Later, Kusuk rushes to pick up Takuma, but Yuzeta tells him he has already left. The next day, Ryu finds a letter in his locker. Yuzukawa appears, asking is it a love letter, and starts causing a scene. Yuki's friend watches from afar and asks Yuki if she put it there, but she denies it. Hayato takes the letter to check it out, but Ryu blushes and takes it back, saying, I'll check it myself. As he is about to read the letter, Inamata steps in and tells them not to block the way. He hides the letter behind him and apologizes. Yuzukawa wipes the letter. With dramatic flair, he starts reading it aloud for all to hear. It's a heartfelt confession from a girl who loves Ryu more than a cat loves chasing a laser pointer. Yuki and Inamata are surprised by this. The letter mentions the girl will be waiting behind the school building. Ryu turns red, unsure how to respond to his first love letter. He takes the letter and says he needs time to think. As he leaves, Hayata points out he's still wearing indoor shoes, which he forgot to change during all this commotion. At daycare kids notice Ryu's red face and says, he's all red. Yuzeta asks him if he has a cold, but Ryu lies that, I just ran all the way here. His baby brother brings a blanket for him and puts on his lap. He pats him and says don't worry, I don't have cold. All day, Ryu can't stop thinking about the confession and drops the baby powder while changing Midori's diaper. He holds the picture book upside down and Kirin has to remind him. And Hayato also reminds him he once again forgot to change his shoes. During dinner, Seikawa, holding a bowl of red rice, congratulates Ryu. Seeing the huge container of rice, Chairwoman asks if there's a reason to celebrate. Seikawa explains that Ryu received his first love letter, causing him to panic and quickly deny it, which confuses the chairwoman. He changed the subject by complimenting delicious-looking red rice, while Katero looks so confused. Later, while Katero is selecting a storybook, Ryu is still thinking about love letter. Katero holds out a book, but then notices Ryu looks flushed and distant. Suddenly, Ryu turns to Katero and asks if he's selected a book. He hides the book and shakes his head. He approaches him and stretches his arm, wanting to go to bed without a story. Ryu tucks him into bed and he slowly closes his eyes. The next morning, Ryu is on his way to school, still thinking about the confession. Katero looks at his brother and then an orange tree. He lets go of a distracted Ryu's hand and runs away. At the same time, Inamata is on her way to school, convincing herself that she left early just to study while denying any plans to spy on Ryu. Yuki is in a similar situation, as she left early to find out what Ryu will say to the girl who confessed to him. They run into each other, and before they can say much, Ryu suddenly grabs Inamata's hand. He's panting because he ran to catch up with her. He asks if they've seen his brother, Katero. He lost him because he got distracted. Inamata says, she hasn't seen him, so he runs down the street to find him. Inamata calls after him and says, I will help you find Katero. Yuki also offers to help him. As they couldn't find Katero, Ryu panics. Just then, he hears Hayato call his name. He turns around and sees Katero, who is holding an orange by Hayato's feet. Hayato tells, Katero had wandered into someone's yard to pick him an orange. Katero holds out the fruit and calls it a lemon, medicine for Ryu's cold. He recalls how his baby brother made him lemon juice when he was sick, realizing that Katero has been caring for him as if he were sick because of his blushing. He gets emotional because his baby brother was worried for him. He kneels down, holds Katero's hands, as he sheds tears. Later, Ryu apologizes to the girl who wrote him the letter as he rejects her proposal, and she sadly accepts his decision and leaves. Hayato, who overheard the conversation, asks why he rejected her when he seemed interested. He says that Katero is his top priority right now. At daycare, Yuzeta corrects Katero, it's orange, but Katero says, no it's lemon. Yuki and Inamata, who are hiding behind the bushes to spy on Ryu, feel relieved that he didn't accept the proposal. Yuki then asks Inamata if they can be friends and calls her Maria-chan. Inamata blushes and says, don't call me by my first name, it's embarrassing. In next scene, Seikawa answers a ringing phone, but it's just heavy breathing on the other end. Hayato hits Taka, telling him to stop stalling and share his name. Taka is upset it's not Ryu on the phone and begs Hayato to ask for Ryu and Katero. He takes the phone and asks for Ryu. Ryu answers the phone as he holds Katero. Taka desperately calls out to his brother. Hayato ignores him and asks Ryu if they have free time, to which he confirms. Ryu then checks with Katero if he wants to talk on the phone. Taka excitedly takes the phone, his nervousness evident as he eagerly awaits his turn. He invites Katero loudly to join him at the summer festival. They hear a bump on the other end as Katero accidentally hits his head on the phone. 
Ryu requests permission from the chairwoman to attend the festival, and she grants it with a warning about not being swindled by vendors. Seikawa presents them with Yutakas for the festival. At the festival, Taka, dressed in a Yutaka, energetically waves his toy sword while waiting for Ryu and Katero. Hayato tells him to stop swinging his sword to avoid bothering others. Ryu calls out to Hayato, asking if he had been waiting long and apologizing. Hayato dismisses the concern and questions Ryu about the effort put into his outfit. Ryu explains that Seikawa and Chairwoman put thought into the outfits, making it impolite to decline. Taka grabs Katero's hand and runs toward the festival stalls, with Ryu cautioning about getting lost. Hayato considers disciplining Taka to avoid further problems. Katero becomes captivated by a cotton candy maker, eagerly observing the cotton candy spinning. Taka consumes his cotton candy immediately, while Katero insists on saving his, despite Ryu warning that it will shrink. Taka spots a booth with various toys, including a hero's transformation belt, attached to strings in a lottery game. The booth attendant offers Taka and Katero a chance to win, but Ryu and Hayato promptly redirect them away from it. They decide to get something substantial to eat, with Taka objecting. They realize the strings in the lottery game are not connected to the toys, particularly the new and costly game system. Taka begins to cry and wave his cotton candy stick. Yuzeta greets Ryu and Hayato from a goldfish booth. Ryu asks, what are you doing here? And Yuzeta explains it's a part-time job from his neighbor. He then asks, why is Taka crying? And Taka says, I want to play that lottery game. Yuzeta gives Taka and Katero goldfish scoopers to cheer them up, but asks for money, although he can give them a discount, making Hayato comment on his hard-selling approach. Taka insists on pulling strings rather than scooping goldfish, and Hayato warns him to be quiet or be left with Yuzeta, which startles Taka. Hayato then asks him about his sword. He looks towards Katero and then at Yuzeta, who says, Don't look at me, I didn't take it. Ryu also says, I don't have it, making him realize he lost it. He starts crying loudly, attracting the attention of people, so he gets whacked by his brother. Ryu comforts Taka as they attempt to find the lost sword. Hayato suggests that he and Katero enjoy the festival while he assists Taka in finding the sword. Ryu expresses his genuine willingness to help Taka as friends, but Hayato remains silent, prompting Ryu to question whether Hayato sees him the same way. Hayato implies that if Taka weren't his brother, he wouldn't spend time with him. Taka cries again, leading Ryu to defend his brother. As they were searching for the sword, Ryu sighs as they check the last stamp. Taka continues to cry for his lost sword, and the cotton candy maker directs them to the lost and found booth, where you can retrieve items lost during the festival. At the lost and found booth, they find Yagi surrounded by many girls. He's in charge of managing this booth. Ryu informs Yagi about Taka's lost sword, and Yagi looks at Taka's tearful face, which causes his nose to bleed. This worries Ryu, but Yagi's friend Nezu reassures him not to worry, as it always happens to Yagi. He instructs them to check the box for the sword. They examine the toy swords, but Taka's sword is not there. He is so sad that his sword is lost. Hayato suggests that they've searched long enough and it's time to give up. Taka refuses to give up, so his brother tells him to search for it himself. Ryu objects, saying you shouldn't be so harsh, but Hayato tells him to shut up. He offers Taka the choice to search for the sword by himself or to join him in playing the lottery game. Hayato also reminds Taka to thank Ryu for helping in the search. Taka contemplates his lost sword and finally considers giving up. They decide to go and play the lottery game. Taka thinks about which string he should pull, and his brother tells him to pull one quickly, but Ryu advises, chill, just give him time to think. Suddenly, Katero impulsively pulls one of the strings, and Taka's sword comes out with it. He is overjoyed to have his sword back. Hayato confronts the booth attendant, who apologizes for stealing Taka's sword, and gives a game as an apology, which they offer to old woman as a souvenir, and Katero is disappointed with his deflated cotton candy. The next day, they all go to the beach. Midori, Taka and Takuma are fully enjoying themselves, while Kirin and Kazuma are crying, and Katero has a cold expression on his face. Ryu is watching the kids. Just then, Yuzeda appears and comments, Ah, they've cleanly split into enjoy it and beach sucks factions. Ryu then says, You don't seem to have any intention of swimming and Yuzeda replies, I am here just to enjoy, I some swimsuit hot is, and nap. He then asks about Hayato, and Ryu points in the direction of the water. Kirin's mom appears from behind, startling Ryu. Other moms also arrive and says, You can also go and enjoy swimming, we'll look after the kids today. Shizuki tells, I asked Inamata to come, hoping to give her a breather. She hasn't arrived yet. Just then, Inamata appears and apologizes for being late. They all appear surprised as she is wearing her school swimsuit. Yuzeta calls her naughty girl for wearing school swimsuit, and Shizuka whacks him. 
Yukari tells her, girls must look pretty and Yaoi agrees too. So, Shizuka says, let's buy a beach suit for you. Yukari says it's a thanks for making delicious sweets for the children. Inomata tries to deny it but couldn't. Yuzeta comments, you can't say no in such a situation, as they see the moms quickly hurrying Inomata to the swimsuit shop. Later, while the kids enjoy eating corn, Yuzeta asks Ryu, why don't you go and swim? He replies, Katero isn't used to the ocean yet. I think I'll stay here with him. Yuzeta says, what's so scary about it? He puts Kazuma in the water to check, who immediately starts crying. Ryu carries a scared Katero into the water, thinking that the children are afraid of being swept away. He stays in the shallows to keep Katero safe, and tries to show him that the ocean isn't scary. Children look them with shock. All of a sudden a big wave crashes over him. Ryu end up underwater holding Katero above the water. Katero is scared even more. Back on the beach, Ryu coughs and tries to reassure Katero that the ocean isn't scary. Yuzeta comments you're not convincing at all, man. Kids tease Ryu for almost drowning. So Ryu suggests let's play in the sand instead and kids agree. Twins build a big sand mountain. Taka digs a hole. And Yuzeta complains about getting sand thrown at him. Katero also makes a sand pile. Ryu is happy that kids are having fun. However, waves crash on beach, destroying their creation and Taka cries loudly. Moms bring some juice for kids, Takuma and Kazuma looks happy to have it. And Taka stops crying as he gets one. Katero looks at his glass, while Taka drinks it fastly. Ryu is also offered one, he tells Katero let's drink it. Suddenly Hayato appears, startling them and Katero's glass falls. Hayato offers him seaweed as an apology. Shizuka smacks him, asking what Katero would do with it. Ryu gives his drink to Katero. She then says, Inamata went and got changed, do you want to say something? They all stare at her for a moment. She is wearing a pink floral bikini with side ponytail. Hayato simply says, it's a swimsuit, causing Shizuka to sigh. Ryu says it's cute, especially the patterns, which confuses everyone, so he clarifies, floral pattern matches to Kirin's inner tube. Other mom says they might be embarrassed to compliment a girl at this age as Shizuka says, my son is heartless. Yeoi says Inomata seems happy as she smiles, matching with Kirin. Just then Ryu sees Katero on gravel and tells him that's not a place to sit. He takes him away from there, and as he walks away, beach water touches his feet. Katero tries to be not scared of water. Ryu thinks Katero is rather cute when he is trying to be strong. He tells him let's go and collect seashell. As he takes Katero, moms warn him that it's hot, be careful. And Ryu soon realizes it's really hot, while Katero finds a shell. Later, when Katero is asleep with other kids, moms tell Ryu to go and play in water, this is best chance. Hayato says, come on let's get going. They enter the water, and Ryu is relieved at cool feeling. Hayato asks you can swim right, and Ryu asks, what do you mean by that? He replies, I thought maybe you couldn't swim because you seem to be avoiding the ocean. Ryu says, I'm not avoiding it, I just didn't want to leave Katero alone. I remember this isn't Katero's first time at the ocean. He may not recall it, but as a baby, we brought him to the beach. That time mom dad took him into the water, he wasn't scared at all. I wonder if he's scared now because I'm not enough to reassure him. Hayato smacks him, making him go underwater. Ryu comes up and asks if Hayato hits Taka that hard but he calls him stupid and says it wasn't even half as hard. He then explains, Katero wasn't scared back then because he was just a baby who didn't know anything. He tells Ryu not to say stupid things. Ryu admits, back then, Katero couldn't even stand. Yukari notices that Katero has woken up. He sits up and looks around for Ryu. She points at the ocean, telling him his brother is in water. He immediately runs towards the water. He stops where the waves are crashing onto the beach, and looks at his brother. When he sees Ryu going underwater, he freezes in fear, recalling Ryu held him above water when wave crashed onto him. He steps into water despite his fear, but he can't swim. Yukari quickly pulls him out. He cries and reaches out for Ryu. Ryu comes out of water and says I heard someone's crying. Hayato points there is commotion at beach. He looks over and sees Katero crying for him. Ryu quickly swims back to the shore. He takes Katero and asks him what's wrong. I'm sorry I left you while you were napping. Yukari explains, I think he got worried when he saw you dive under. Katero tried to walk into the water he was so afraid of, just for you. While Katero is still clinging to his brother tightly. Yukari says it's nice that you two are so close. Ryu says, sorry, I worried you and hands him a shell, remembering his father told him you could hear the ocean from shell. He thinks Katero wouldn't remember this, but to his surprise, Katero holds the shell to his ear to listen to the ocean. Ryu smiles and helps him hold the shell correctly, saying he had it upside down, and hopes that next time Katero visits the beach, he will love the ocean. In next scene Taka looks upset, Ryu asks him what happened. He rushes into his arms and tries to explain, but he's sniffling, and Ryu can't understand him. Shizuka tells Ryu what happened, showing him a ball covered in scribbles. Katero says poop. 
She explains, Taka drew poop on autographed baseball that Hayato treasures. Ryu gasps, thinking Hayato got very angry and hit Taka hard. Shizuki says it wasn't like that and recalls. Hayato stared at his ruined baseball while Taka teased him for not spending time with him. Expecting a hit, Taka covered his head. But, Hayato walked past without a word and asked his mother for food completely ignoring Taka. Afterwards, he continues ignoring Taka and left for school without taking Taka with him. Taka started crying, and Shizuka asked what was wrong. Ryu comments Hayato must be really mad, and Taka wails it's Hayato's fault so I'll not apologize. Shizuka tells Ryu to go and talk to Hayato, or else he'll keep ignoring Taka. He asks who is going to look after kids since Shizuka has supplementary classes to get going to, and Yuzeta is not here. Just then, the chairwoman opens door and says, I will look after the children. She demands that the two immediately get moving, as she can't of the sound of crying child. Echo in the hallway, Shizuka and Ryu comply. As they leave, Katero calls the chairwoman Shaggy. Taka scares as she glares at him, but she kneels down helping him to blow his nose. Ryu goes to baseball club's practice and a club member warns him not to talk to Hayato. They see Hayato is in bad mood, angrily swinging his bat. Ryu decides to talk to him and approaches him. He calls out to Hayato and asks if they can talk. Ryu tells him that if he won't forgive Taka, he will gonna wail whole day. He then further says that Katero's destroyed lot of my stuffs too. I understand the feeling, never wanting to talk to him again. He recalls the time when Katero scribbled all over my homework. Another time he destroyed my matchstick castle that took two weeks to build. He recently dropped my phone and toilet, which had emails from my mom and dad. Hayato pats him and he wipe his tears. He says, since it was an accident, he'll just move on. Hayato says my situation with Taka is different. I don't care about the object itself, but Taka is malicious. I know he's not sorry yet and with a brat like him I guess, I have to just suck it up. Meanwhile, Chairwoman listens to Taka as he explains what happened, and he sniffles while blaming Hayato for not playing with him. She asks him if he treasures anything, and he eagerly shows his toy sword. She takes the sword and asks Sakawa to get a hammer to destroy it, which upsets Taka. She is about to destroy the sword with hammer, but Taka begs her to stop. But she didn't destroy it and says that's what you did with your brother and gives back his sword. Asking if he truly did nothing wrong. Taka reflects on his actions. When Ryu returns, Chairwoman tells Seikawa that they should get going. After school, Ryu asks Taka if he would like to go to apologize to Hayato, and to his surprise, he quietly nod. They arrive at baseball club's practice area, where Taka hides behind Ryu. Hayato stares him and turns to walks away. Taka sprints after him, calling for him to wait, but he slips and falls. Hayato calls him idiot and says if you don't hurry up I'll leave you. He immediately runs toward his brother, he cries out loudly, and says sorry. Hayato whacks him and then pats his head. He apologizes for not spending time with him. Ryu feels happy on seeing the brothers uniting again, while Katero holds his finger tightly. Morinamiya Academy is having a cultural festival today. The daycare room decided to set up a refreshment stand, with babies taking part. Ryu's flyer warns guests that the kids are prone to spilling juice, which Yuzeta thinks is bad for business. Katero attempts to carry the juice but slips on some juice on floor and starts to tumble. Taka bumps into Kazuma, who bumps into Takuma, and everyone spills the juice. They all are lying on the floor, wearing their cute vegetable costumes. Yuzeta made the costumes. He also made a giant corn cob for Ryu. As Ryu wears his costume, Yuzeta tells that kid's fathers are also coming today. Kirin excitedly says, my papa's coming too. Suddenly Kirin's mom appears, freaking out Ryu. He falls on ground and says I'm unable to move. Taka says I'll move you, but fails as he starts rolling. Katero lies down and get rolled with Ryu, and Yuzeta clicks their picture. Hayato appears and says why gaint corn blocking the door and realizes it's Ryu. Afterwards Kirin's mom tell she can't attend daycare program because of some urgent work. Kirin tears up so. She assures Kirin her father will be here for her. Yeoi then asks a favor from Ryu and others regarding her husband. Meanwhile, a man, likely Yeoi's husband, offers flowers to two girls and asks for directions to the daycare. And Yui is upset because Midori's mom isn't there, but a bearded man approaches him and asks to be taken to daycare. Twins actor dad is hiding in the bushes, trying to avoid his fangirls, while finding his way to the daycare. Kieran's father opens the door and calls out to his daughter. He immediately starts taking pictures of Kieran, calling her incredibly cute in her carrot costume. And as Kieran smiles she looks more cuter. Yeoi asks her husband, You came so early my dear and he tells I was so excited for this. He gives her bouquet and tries to kiss her in front of kids, but she stops him from doing so. His attention then shifts to babysitters. It turns out that Kieran's mom asked for a rather unusual favor. She needs boys to pretend to be girls because her husband is paranoid and thinks everyone is trying to marry their daughter. Yuzeta is attempting an unconvincing high-pitched girl voice to sell the idea, but when Kieran's dad was about to shake hand, he sees through it right away. 
He gets angry and asks Yeoi why there are male babysitters, but she has already left. He realizes that the other kids are boys as well and takes offense. Midori bites his leg. Kirin points out, Midori is not a boy. He picks up Midori and apologizes. He compliments her big round eyes and says if I were 30 years younger, I'd ask for her hand in marriage. Ryu, Hayato, and Yuzeta awkwardly watch him compliment Midori. He turns to the boys and demands to know their intentions toward Kirin. They all tell that they like Kirin and Kirin also says I like them all, too. But Taka says I don't like you Kirin, and she retaliates. Her dad angrily asks what kind of jerk wouldn't like my cute daughter. He then says I don't want to leave my daughter in room full of beast men and plans to leave. Ryu steps in and tries to convince him, but as he's wearing a wig he looks like a cute girl. Kirin's dad holds his hand and says, If I were 15 years younger I'd ask for your hand. Ryu contemplates revealing his true gender, but before he can decide, Midori takes off his wig and he turns to leave, saying males are unacceptable. Ryu asks Hayato to stop him, who glares at Kirin's father and tells if you want to leave you are leaving by yourself. Kirin's dad redirects his attention to Hayato, hitting on him. But it turns out, Hayato is also a boy. Kirin tears up asking him to stay and watch her successfully carry the juice. And he can't say no to his cute daughter. Just then Midori's dad appears and takes his daughter from Kirin's dad. They both introduce themselves to each other. Inui goes up to Ryu and questions so, I've lost Yukari to this wild looking bearded man. While he's not looking, Yuzeta puts Ryu's wig back on and he mistakenly thinks he's talking to a girl. Parents arrive at the daycare center. Yukari asks Inui if he's come to see the kid's refreshment stand. But he clarifies, he was only showing her husband the way and then runs away. But outside he thinks back to the girl he saw and says she was cute. Kirin finally gets to present her juice, successfully carrying it without spilling, and her dad reflects on how fast she's growing up. He becomes emotional, worrying about her future marriage, that someday she'll be taken away by some jerk. This leads to more tears in his eyes, and other dads also starts crying. And Ryu comments it's too early to think about marriage. Kirin says it's Katero's turn. Her dad furiously asks, who's Katero? Ryu sits and watches Katero as his baby brother carries the juice to him. Ryu reflects on how fast Katero is growing. He spills a bit but manages to deliver the juice. Seikawa shows up and startles Ryu, praising Katero and explaining that chairwoman can't come because she has a visitor, which disappoints Katero. Seikawa says, I noticed regret in her eyes. And Ryu envisions her scolding him for assuming her feelings. Kirin's father suggests, to remember this day let's take pictures and Kirin comment Papa takes great pictures. Moms are spending time with their kids, so Kirin's dad says look this way everyone, I'm taking picture. Taka is with Katero and says I ain't gonna look that way. Cute Tomato Twins says, we're gonna look that way. Midori cries out loudly, and Kirin gives a cute smile. Kirin Dad says, here we go and takes a group photo. The next day, Ryu is trying to calm down crying Taka who was whacked by his brother. And kids tremble in fear as Hayato threatens to hit those who don't listen like Taka. His mother appears and hits him for threatening kids. Then she hits Yuzeta for sleeping on job. Hayato asks her why are you here and she tells that I'm here to invite the kids to watch chicks hatching from eggs in the science lab. Yuzeta remembers that she's science teacher. The children's eyes sparkle as they listen to Shizuki talk about the eggs. They rush towards the door to see the chicks. She says let me finish talking, they'll hatch tomorrow. The kids aren't only ones excited, Rai wants the chicks to imprint on him and follow him around. Hayato asks why, as the children already follow him. Ryu agrees, while kids excitedly request to see the eggs. So they all go to Cern's lab, children watch at the eggs curiously. They then turn to Ryu and calls him liar as Kirin thinks that it's a refrigerator where eggs are kept. Ryu tries to explain that it's incubator but kids don't want to listen. Ryu asks for Shizuki's help but she leaves for a class. So Hayato raises the fist and order them to listen. They all get scared and goes closer to Ryu, who explains that Incubator keeps eggs warm, and they'll see the chicks hatch tomorrow if they wait patiently. Yuzeta comments, staring at eggs can be boring, but Katero could do it all day. Ryu notices his tiny forehead pressed against the Incubator glass. He picks up Katero and says let's come tomorrow, while Yuzeta finds kids dismantling a model of body. Next day in early morning, Katero is dragging Ryu to the science lab. He points to the science room, asking to see the chicks. Just then, Ryu hears Shizuka saying that students with a passion are always welcome to learn. They're just in time, chicks are about to hatch. Ryu and Katero eagerly watch the chicks hatching. Shizuka smiles when she sees that even Ryu is excited to see the chicks. She calls the two cute, unlike her own sons, who are currently asleep. After an hour, Shizuka is asleep, Ryu is nodding off, but Katero remains pressed against Incubator. He sees that a chick has stuck its wing out. Ryu wakes up to see Katero is so concentrated on the chicks that his forehead is emitting steam. He holds in his laughter as he watches Katero struggle along with the chick. 
chicks are finally out of their shells and Kitaro tells his brother. But as he looks back at chick it falls down and Shizuka explains it's resting after working hard to break out. Kitaro hugs his brother, this is a deeply emotional experience for him, and Ryu reflects on his own feelings when his baby brother was born. He holds Kitaro and says let's go tell everyone. Later, chicks have imprinted on Kitaro and are now following him around. Kids are surprised to see chicks following him. Taka gets jealous saying it's not fair, Kitaro gets them all. He tries to grab one and chicks scatter. The kids chase them around. Ryu asks Yuzeta to help him catch the chicks, but one heads toward the window where a cat is lurking. They all gasp as the cat targets the chick. Cat pounces, and to everyone's surprise, Katero shields the chick. Thankfully, Hayato grabs the cat before it reaches the chick, reminding them to close the window when releasing the chicks. Ryu pats Katero's head, saying good boy you tried saving chick. And Katero smiles as he holds the chick. Lastly, Ryu followed by Katero, followed by chicks. Today, Yuzeta is at home sick and appears quite miserable when he calls Ryu. Taka constantly jumps asking to talk to him while Katero listens silently. Yuzeta informs Ryu that he can't come into the daycare and has asked Seikawa to fill in for him, who suddenly appears and startles Ryu. He tells him that I will try my best to handle the kids today, you can go to your class. To take care of Midori, Seikawa brought a book called, Now That You're a Mommy. Katero grabs his pant and expresses support with grunts. Seikawa is deeply touched by gesture. Shizuka tells Taka to behave properly with Seikawa, and Ryu tells Katero to be good boy with him. Other kids arrive and excitedly says it's Butler Guy. Ryu straps Midori onto Seikawa. Kids run towards him and he greets them. While Seikawa plays drum to entertain Midori, Ryu tells he's here today as Yuzeta has cold. Kirin is excited to spend time with him. Twins want to play with Seikawa. Taka says who wants stupid Yuzeta around and he sneezes. Ryu says I need to get to class, thanks for help. He then waves to kids before leaving, and they waves him back saying, see you later. Now, kids are standing too far away, and Seikawa considers how to create safe and welcoming atmosphere for kids. Kitaro puts his hands on him to express his support. It's a heartwarming moment. Seikawa decides best way to proceed is to bow and make an elaborate statement about needing everyone's support. Kids interpret this as if they are now in charge. Now he feels the kids are comfortable with him as they pull him, saying they'll teach him different games. Meanwhile, Yuzaitis is lying on his bed, where he hopes the kids aren't missing him too much, although he imagines them all crying without him. Katero holds book, Sad Panda. Yuzeta barely gets any rest before receiving a call from Seikawa. The connection is bad, but he catches something about an emergency related to Midori before the line cuts. When he calls back, phone is out of service, leaving him worried about what might have happened. In a flashback of 10 minutes ago, Midori is crying, as her diaper leaked onto Seikawa's back. He says we must change her diaper, so Kirin runs to get diapers and Taka goes to bring wipes. Seikawa thanks them, but urges them not to run. Kirin bumps into Taka and two fall over, soaking diapers into water. They begin to tear up but Seikawa tells them not to panic and calls Yuzeta for spare diapers, as it's emergency related to Midori. But Midori slaps his phone and it falls in water. Kirin starts to cry saying it's all Taka's fault. Taka cries out it's ain't my fault. Midori is also crying loudly. And seeing everyone cry, Twins also starts to cry. Babysitter Club becomes crying club except Katero. Seikawa lays Midori down and takes charge, adjusting his glasses and rolling up his sleeves, he holds a cloth up. Meanwhile, Ru and his classmates are jogging during their gym period. Suddenly a man collapses on the ground, shocking Ryu. Soon he realizes that it's Yuzeta, who's still feeling unwell, but is desperate to learn about the emergency with Midori. Ryu and Hayato help him and take him to the daycare room. However, Midori is totally fine, thanks to Seikawa's efforts in making her a cloth diaper and washing her soiled clothes. Yuzeta is relieved by this. Taka and Kirin tells him that we are doing fine, you go and take rest. Katero says drink lemon tea and twin says, Usa, get well soon. Yuzeta gets emotional and Hayato says, you're a little old to cry. Yuzeta is now ready to leave but Midori grabs his pants and pull it. Seikawa tells that Midori was most concerned about his absence. Just then Midori calls his name, and he blushes. Ryu is surprised as this is the first time Midori spoke. Next day, Yukari pouts as she holds Midori. She says it's not fair, because Midori's first word should be mama or papa. Yuzeta says sorry, and Midori smiles. In the next scene, Yuki is sneaking around Daker room trying to get her ball. She blushes, convincing herself she's not here to peek at Ryu. Despite her efforts, she ends up peeking inside. Takuma spots her, and she quickly hides just before Ryu looks outside. Inomata appears and asks why she's behind the bushes. She says, I'm not spying on Ryu, I was here for ball. But it's gone, and Kat plays with it. Inomata says stop making excuse, she blushes and says if you are embarrassed to play with kids by yourself, I'll accompany you. But as she gets no response she starts leaving. Yuki stops her blurting out, I have a hard time with small children. 
just as kids open the window to see what's happening, and Amada takes charge and informs Ryu that Yuki needs assistance adjusting to small children. She then holds her hand and ushers Yuki into the daycare room, while Takuma tries to climb on window and Ryu stops him. In the way an Amada tells her the importance of getting used to children for her future, and she blushes. In room, Yuki looks at kids, who stare back at her. Kirin asks for her name, and she introduces herself. The kids all start introducing themselves at once, overwhelming her. Ryu says kids seem comfortable with you, leaving her flustered. Kirin jumps onto her chest, saying it feels just like mommy's, making Yuki blush. Other kids ask to touch as well. Ryu and an Amada quickly restrain them. Yuzeta suggests a walk to redirect the kid's energy, and they excitedly run towards the door. For walk each teenager pairs up with a kid. Kirin tells Inamata hold my hand tightly and don't let go. Yuzeta holds Taka's hand, who says I don't want you. Ryu asks twins to come with him and they agree. Katero looks at Ryu, who tells Yuki, hold Katero's hand, since he's calmest. She asks for his hand and he holds her hand. Yuki and Katero walk hand in hand, she's touched, thinking he's really cute. She recalls, in past kids tried to spit on her or lift her skirt but feels relieved to be around kids like Katero. She notices, Katero feeling rejected as he's not with Ryu. She thinks he's crying and takes out her hanky to wipe it. But it's just runny nose and she freaks out. So, Taka comes and starts wiping nose with her skirt and Ryu stops him. Kirin runs up to Yuki, asking her hold out her hand. She gives her some bugs, which stuns Yuki to the point where she faints thinking, I'll never get along with kids, like Ryu and Inamata. She regains consciousness in the nurse's office, and Ryu appears, asking if she's awake. She sits up and blushes as she asks, did you carry me here? He tells her, Yuzeta carried you here. He then asks her if she's fine now, but she feels upset and tells Ryu, I'm sorry I'm bad at getting along with little kids. He assures her, being with kids is really tough, even I don't like snot and gross stuff, nobody does. I'm just used to it, even as a boy, I'm disgusted by bugs. He explains, kids don't hold back when they play, but when you get used to them, you'll feel happy around them. Just then Yuzeta opens the window and tells, kids want to apologize. Kirin remorsefully asks, flowers aren't scary like bugs, right? Yuki takes the flowers and thanks them. All the kids smile as they see her smiling. She then asks Ryu where Inamata is, and he tells, she just left and had told me to apologize you, for forcing you into this. Upon hearing this, she runs to catch Inamata, who is upset, thinking she messes up everything she tries. Just then Yuki hugs her from behind, and thanks her for everything causing Inamata to blush and feel affectionate. In next scene, Ryu's friend calls and invites him to a movie. He denies, because he has to take care of Katero. Seikawa appears and says, I'll take care of him you can go. While leaving, Ryu thanks Seikawa for looking after his baby brother and tells Katero to be good boy while I'm out. And he nods. Seikawa assures Ryu that he will protect Katero with his life. He then holds Katero's hand to wave goodbye to him. After Ryu leaves, Katero feels sad without him, so Seikawa asks him should I bring some snacks for you, but he shakes his head. His snack strategy fails to restore Katero's mood, so he thinks to make an offer of play. He picks a cat ale-like plant from flower pot and waves it in front of Katero, who immediately lights up. As he starts waving it continuously, Katero blushes with excitement. He holds up the plant and he immediately catches it. Meanwhile, Ryu meets up with his friends. Hayato also appears with a bite mark on his face. Ryu asks, were you with a girl? Hayato explains, his brother bit him, so he hit him for that. Now Scary Zombies approaches a girl, who cries out and starts running. Ryu watches this scary scene with his friends, who are extremely terrified, except Ryu and Hayato. At mansion, Seikawa draws Ryu on a ball and throws it. Katero runs to fetch the ball, but when he tries to catch it, he accidentally pushes it away, and he begins chasing it around the mansion. Katero turns the corner and Seikawa tells him don't go too far. He ends up in a room which has a large open window. Wind blows curtain around as pages of a book flip around on the table. Seikawa picks up the ball and gives it to Katero. He tells him this is a library which belongs to Chairwoman's late son and his wife. He recalls a moment when Chairwoman's son says to him, Come here Seikawa I'll read a joke collection for you. Just once before I die, I want to see you laughing head off. He also recalls the time when Chairwoman told him, Stop cleaning the library, no one is using it anymore, but later he saw her airing it out for the sake of two who will never return. He picks up the book on the table as Katero calls to him. He holds out a book and Seikawa takes it, asking, you want me to read it and he nods. While Chairwoman steps out of the car and heads to the mansion, she spots her son and his wife in library and gasps, but soon realizes it's Seikawa reading a book to Katero. In evening, Ryu waves goodbye to his friends and runs home. 
At the same time, Seikawa and Katero are at the door, waiting for Ryu's arrival. As door opens Katero gets up and runs toward his brother and hug him. Seikawa explains that Katero seemed impatient to see you, so we decide to wait here for you. And Katero is still clinging to his brother. Ryu thanks him for looking after Katero. From his pocket, he takes out a zombie keychain as a souvenir for Seikawa. Katero calls it zombie. Ryu thinks Seikawa might not like it, but he happily accepts it. He tells Ryu, because of the two of them he had a wonderful day. Just then chairwoman appears and instructs Sekawa to start preparing dinner, and as he leaves, she tells Ryu to assist him. Later, Ryu asks Sekawa what games he played with Katero. He waves Katero and tells we played standard games like this, while Katero shows his ball to Ryu. Now December begins and city completely shifted to Christmas mode. Katero is obsessed with Santa Claus everywhere. He keeps stopping in the street every time he sees a Santa. A man dressed as Santa nervously looks back at Katero's stare. He even mistakes Santa for a man walking his dog. Ryu drops from exhaustion as he arrives at the daycare. He tells Yuzeta everything and Yuzeta says that's why you ended up getting late here. Katero stares at gambling flyer, Yuzeta says, you're too young for that. Ryu points out, I think he's staring at Santa on it. Taka approaches and tells, I met a super cool Santa at toy section. Just then Yuzeta teases him Santa only comes to good boys, you're a bad boy. Taka tears up and says I'm a good boy. Yuzeta says, but you never eat your broccoli. He replies but I don't like broccoli and Yuzeta says, that's why Santa will not come to you. So, he says, I'll eat broccoli. But before they can respond, Hayato hits Yuzeta, accusing him of making his brother cry on purpose. Taka then asks to his brother, will Santa come to our house? Hayato was about to tell truth, real Santa won't exist. But Ryu stops him saying don't shatter his dream. Katero approaches Taka and pulls his sweater as he turns around and he pats him, calling him good boy. Taka asks will Santa come and Katero nods. On December 18th, Kirin appears and says I told Santa my wish, but it's secret. Her dad admires her cuteness and asks Ryu if he's noticed, warning him not to fall for her. Next day, Yuzeta yawns while kids are playing. Just then he spots in Amada and Yuki. December 20th, twins tells we asked Santa, keep us together forever. Kusuk cries for Ryu's help with a Christmas gift for his twins. On December 21st, Yukari is holding cute Midori and tells I made a Santa outfit for Midori's dad. Ryu imagines him in Santa costume saying he'll look perfect. And Midori smiles. Later, while changing into gym outfits, Ryu contemplates dressing as Santa. Seeing his big belly, Yuzukawa asks what Ryu is trying to do. Ryu gets flustered and tells he's trying to look like Santa. Yuzukawa thought he was pretending to be pregnant. Yuki peeks to see Ryu. Kawada says, Don't peek while boys are changing. Boys asks you wanna play Santa for your brother. Aother interrupts and says, Isn't becoming Santa is your dad's job? His friend hits him saying, You idiot he doesn't have parents. And he apologizes. Ryu tells them he wants to be Santa for Katero. He's really excited about Santa. One boy wails, How good of a big brother can you be? Another gets emotional. They suggest Ryu buy a Santa suit online, but his smartphone isn't working. They recommend asking Chairwoman for a new one, but Ryu wants to buy her a gift for taking them in. Hayato overhears and decides to skip gym and visits to Chairwoman's office. On Christmas Eve, both excitedly look at beautiful Christmas tree. Seikawa presents an extravagant feast for them. Katero gets ready to eat. Ryu says it's too much for two of us. Seikawa tells Chairwoman is at work so she can't be here. This makes Katero sad. Seikawa has some work too, so he can't be here as well, making Katero sadder. He wished them Merry Christmas and leaves. Katero grabs onto Ryu's sleeve because they're all alone. Ryu comforts him, telling him that his brother is still here, they can enjoy the food, and tells Santa will be here soon. Upon hearing this Katero gets excited. He then recalls the Santa dress his friends managed for him. He tells Katero I need to go bathroom. But as he walks, his baby brother starts following him. He turn around and surprised to see Katero behind him. He takes the Santa costume and reaches outside the bathroom to wear it. But as he sit inside, he saw Katero already entered with him. And it become difficult for Ryu to transform into Santa. Just then, doorbell rings and Katero's eyes sparkle as he says Santa is here. As the door opens, they see everyone is there wishing them Merry Christmas. Ryu blushes while Katero's eyes light up. Chairwoman approaches Ryu and taps his head with present, saying that she dislikes children who fail to mature. She hands the gift to him, and he takes it. And everyone looks happy. Kids, parents and Ryu's friends. But happiest is Katero. It is revealed that Hayato told Chairwoman about Ryu broken phone. That's why he gets new phone as present from Chairwoman. Everyone counts down from five as they get ready to take a memorable picture together. They all wish Merry Christmas as the picture is taken. With this our story ends with happy note. Let's aim for 1 million likes. We will make more beautiful video like this and what is our favorite thing about this story? 
I always read each and every one of your comments. So comment right now and don't forget, you guys are the best.